In Rosa Maria Arquimbal's novel, Forty Lost Years, <coughs> or Quarenta Anos Perduts, it was published in 1971, Laura Vidal looks back on her life to the uh, advent of the Second Republic in 1931, a time of hope. The days and months passed slowly. I wanted to grow up once and for all and be a woman, to be able to do whatever I wanted and not to have to ask permission to do everything, to be free. To not have to depend on mother and father or even on my brother and sister. That didn't mean I didn't love them. Quite the opposite. I love them a lot and would have done anything for them, even if it meant making sacrifices. I'd like to have improved their lives and given them a decent flat to live in. Not that filthy cubby hole where we breathed in the fumes from the neighbours' gas meters that were right next to our kitchen, diner and bedroom all the time. And I'd like my father to have had his own workshop and for my brother to learn his trade in a prestigious place where they taught him properly and not where he was working which was out and out exploitation and taught him nothing and for mother not to have to scrub the stairs and mess up her hands and Esperanza to own her own corsetry shop and what about me well I'd have liked to earn money from my own censorship shop so I could help everyone in the family but I wanted to be free not to depend on them not to have to ask their permission for everything or for them always to be giving me orders scolding me and forcing me to do things I didn't like. But being 14 meant just that, obeying, obeying, always obeying, despite the rebellious spirit you feel inside you. And come the Civil War and the adva advance of Franco's troops on Barcelona, Laura and her two of her friends decide to go to the frontier and to Pepignon. I wasn't hooked on Francesque, but Francesque meant having a flat and a man around, and he seemed keen on me. Apparently he had been a coup de foudre, and Gracia told me I'd struck it lucky, and that she was thinking about returning to Barcelona the second she could, as she saw no future for herself in France. She did just that soon after. She wrote to her bean and chickpea merchant, and one day he turned up in Perpignan to take her off. He met her at the Grand Hotel where he was staying. And it was the first time I'd stepped inside that place. The Grand Hotel was lovely and they served us a magnificent lunch. I went alone to accompany Gracia. Herminia's husband wouldn't let her come and Frances created a scene saying he couldn't believe I wanted to meet a fascist bastard like that bean merchant who made his money speculating on the people's hunger. But I'd known a few bastards in my time and told him I couldn't care less. I wanted to say goodbye to Gracia who'd always been a good friend to me. The bean and chickpea merchant smirked when Engracia said she decided to return to Barcelona with him. He said he still worked as a wholesaler and that he was onto a good thing and raking in more than ever because there was more hunger than ever. He was ugly, old and foul-mouthed. Thick too, but obviously not when it came to selling beans and chickpeas. I stared at Engracia and couldn't work out how she could go off with him, however many chickpeas beans and chickpeas he sold and eventually of course uh, Laura returns to Barcelona resumes her work as a dressmaker and uh, Ingracia and her husband invite her to uh, to go to Perpignan because people from Barcelona went to Perpignan to see pawn shows and uh, strip acts, things they couldn't see or do in Barcelona. And uh, this is what she does. This is what Lara does in uh, Perpignan, because she doesn't go to any of that. I aimlessly roamed the streets of Perpignan and thought about lots of things. I thought how, if when I lived in Perpignan during the war, they told me I'd come back 20 years later and see it all from the perspective I now had, I wouldn't have believed them. In those days, my longing to return home overwhelmed, even tortured me, and now I'd have stayed on there without a single regret. Disillusion had made me what I was, a woman who'd seen the world and felt hollow inside, 
and expected nothing from life. None of what makes living feel like what you call life. Where had my youthful zest come, or my hopes of a better world? And my wish to fight, and my desire for justice? What had become of my ideals? Where were the high hopes sparked by April the 14th, that immense spring that had opened my stunned eyes to the world and to life? I was weary, incredibly weary. Rather than old, I felt just that, weary. So, uh, Laura Vidal's narrative is a striking account of that historical period from the point of view of somebody who comes from a working class family and ends up dressing the rich in Francoist Spain. <laughs> 